Right, solder. Some weird blue thing, look. Right, let me just whack that one in quick then, as they say. It's alive, we have flashing lights. Hello, I'm Robin Vincent and welcome back to Molten Modular DIY. Back in my soldering corner here to do a Bufaco, or is it a Rebel Technology kit? Because Bufaco have taken on production of Rebel Technology modules and within that they're adjusting them, tweaking them and re-releasing them as some rather nice kits. The one I'm going to do today is this, this one. This one. It's called... It's called Sto Sto Stoicheia. You know how I am with blooming pronunciations. It's Greek anyway, and it's awesome. It's something to do with the title of a book by Euclid, because this is all about Euclidean algorithms and creation of patterns that we use in percussion. Very useful in Eurac. Find them around a lot, and I've not had one yet, so this is quite exciting for me. Two channels of it, two channels that generate interesting patterns based on Euclidean algorithms. So, Stoicheia, or whatever it is it's going to be called, is what we are building today. So let's just get straight on with it, shall we? Have a look at the kit. Now, the front panel is PCB. It's not metal, which I'm quite surprised at, I have to say. But it still looks pretty good to me. I'm really liking the the glowing silveriness of the inlay that's in here and it appears to be a single unassuming PCB. This could be really nice and straightforward. That's what I like, something straightforward that gives me a lot of functionality. So a couple of bags of bits, the switches, oh a nice big chip. That's cool. Couple of knobs, couple of knurlies, always important. A few more knobs. Getting quite a collection of these little Bufaco nut tools now, I have to say. I like that. Over there, and a power cable. So, good, simple stuff. There's no online instructions at the moment because they're not yet on the website. So I'm going to have to go, have to go with the ones they supply to me. So that's a risk to start with <laughs> because these things inevitably get updated after a couple of uh, people have had a go because there's always just those little things that creep in that aren't perhaps quite right. So, soldering iron's on, got that. Not going to need that bit for a little bit. Let's see where we go. This time I might even read through it a little bit before I get stuck in too far. Because I've been known to miss things. Would you believe? No, it's possible. It's possible. So this is designed to be taken into account the common issues that people experience with our in our workshops. And so to make it as easy to assemble as possible. Lovely. Some of the steps are not obvious, so do take your time. Thanks. Good luck, it says. Thanks. Thanks, Bufaco. That's nice. Open bag A. Right. This is going to be Resistor Town, so let's do a bit of that. Bang A. So I'll keep my chip to one side for the moment. That's a capacitor. Some transistors. That's a bunch of resistors, not labelled. There's a three. Let's get those capacitors out of the way for the minute. That one's big fat diode. Ooh, a weird blue one. <laughs> so apparently I should have nine 1Ks, so that's going to be those. Three 10Ks. And then two, two, and two, which I'm going to have to work out which is which. But let's get started with these 1K ones. Now I could measure them on a multimeter, but you don't necessarily have one of those. And so we're just gonna go with the assumption that these are correct. I'll measure those other three and I'll look at the color codes just to make sure that those are right. But otherwise, we're just gonna go with it because we believe, we have faith. We have faith in Bifaco that they've put the right components in. So I'm gonna give them the magic bend like that and then fill them all in. 
Yeah, no, I can't do it without I can't do it without a magnifier these days. I mean, this isn't a, a terribly small kit, but I still find that I'm going to have to get myself some reading glasses ultimately. But I'm going with this at the moment. So what are we doing? R1, R4. All right, these are a bit sort of muddled up. I've got. Normally speaking, you tend to find that you know resistors go down in number or up in number rather as you go down the pcb they tend to follow that that sort of line this one does not i've got r1 over here r3 at the top we've got r2 over here so okay let's have to approach this a little bit differently so there's r1 no that's not r1 that's r11 there's r1 well i'm off to a flying start with this fella r1 find an R4 R7 sorry about the cock crawl there's two of them next door they seem to be expanding the farm which is awesome good now before I solder these I'm just going to look at the other ones because you don't want to sit here and watch me solder in real time, necessarily. So I'll time lapse all the, the soldering. I'll just measure these ones first, just to make sure that we know which are which before we continue. So these blue ones here, we've got brown, orange, black, black. No, no such thing exists. Okay. <laughs> Brown, black, black, orange. Brown, black, black, orange, brown. There we go. That's the 100K. So those are the 100s. Come on, pen work. 100K. I then got brown, yellow, black. No. <laughs> Never reading from the right way. Brown, black, black, yellow, brown. Okay, that's one meg. Which means that these ones should be all black. Brown, black, 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 brown. Yes, that's 100. Great, so I'll put all those in and I'll see you for the next stage. Super smashing great. That's all the resistors done. Now we're on to the diodes. This fella here, big thick chunky one. It's got a line on it. That's going to show us where it's going to go on here. D3 apparently, not D1. No, D3. Looks like it's going to be here. So this one, nice and thick legs. Not sure why that's important. So it's going to go so that the the line matches up with the line on the screen print very simply very easily good morning to you cockerel outside how lovely to hear from you today every day all day <laughs> yeah good right let me just whack that one in quick then as they say Lovely. Now these with the stronger legs really do twang when you cut them. Whereas those little scrawny resistors I had a moment ago, they were not, there was no, there was no life. No life in the legs. They weren't wanting to get off anywhere. They just came off nice and easy. So that's good. Now next it wants to do the IC socket, which is this one. And there's always a debate, I think, between the height of IC sockets and the height of capacitors. But I'm just going to follow the instructions doggedly. <laughs> so this is an Atmega 328 processor that's going to be doing all of the maths to generate the algorithms. I'm sure uh, Euclid, you know, did it on a on a piece of papyrus with a some charcoal or something. But no, no, we have to do it with computers. But that's fine. Not 
trying to make any kind of statement about anything. Anyway, so this is going to go on here, big fat IC1. Just got to make sure that the nick there on the IC holder matches up with the screen print there so that we get it the right way around because that's indicating the pin one sort of thing. All right, squash that in. Good. Uh, I guess we do it. It seems to be in there, more or less, strong enough so that I don't have to put something on it. Good. I'm just going to have to hold that down but no, underneath. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, good. We're on this one then. I'm just going to solder these legs. Oops. So I'm going to flatten it to make sure I've got it completely flat, take the soldering iron off and check. That looks pretty good to me. Yeah, good. Now I can do the rest. Super, easy, next page. capacitors and a resonator. Interesting. And then transistors and regulators. So we should have three of the 104s. Our favourite 104 little knobbly things. Yeah, fine. Then two 10 microfarad. Yeah. And... 116 megahertz resonator. Is that this, do we think? No. Must be this thing then. 160.n. Look at that. Some weird blue thing, look. <laughs> right, apparently that's a 16 megahertz resonator. 160.n. Okay, let's stick those in then. So C1. With these ones, they don't have any polarity, so they just go straight in. C5. C3. With these ones. The, uh, the banding on the capacitor itself is negative, which means the long leg is positive. They have to go in round the right way. So for C2 and C4, C2 and C4. Oh, okay, the silk screen is slightly different, but it's got positive on this side, then it's got a solid line for the negative. But we know that's positive, we know that's a long leg. A long leg positive goes in there. No problem. This one, it's the same way around, long leg positive. Goes in. Easy peasy. Then this three-legged fella. Doesn't seem to matter which way round. Okay. Why one? Super. Well, I'll solder all of those. See you all in a minute. We'll get on with transistors and regulators. Easy, no problem, no bother. Now I've got four of these fellas, transistors, and one other thing, <laughs> which is a 7805, I think that is. Yeah, so these have got to be in the right way again, of course. But you'll find on the board, hopefully, mm. that they are shaped correctly. Let's have a look. So these are Q1, Q2, Q1 here, Q2. So as you can see on the board, they're shaped in the same way that this is shaped on the end. So you can't really go far wrong. Just follow the pattern on the board. They pop right in, not that one, these ones. Q3 there. Q2. 
I just fan out the outside legs so they don't fall out when I turn it over. What am I missing? That one there in the middle. Make sure it's the right way round. Looks like they're all facing each other. Easy peasy. Then this last one goes into IC2, which is over here. Again, you follow the shape of the top. And this one has slightly offset legs. So we might be getting that to work easily. Oh yeah. No problem. Give it a little wibble down. Wibble wibble. Good good. Let's get those bits soldered. Good, well it's all shaping up, look at that. Power connector, power connector, power connector. That's going to be, I think, in another bag. No, it's just going to be a missing power connector. Rats. Power connector goes here. Now there is a Oh, hang on. Open bag B. Right, open bag B. Right. <laughs> Let's read the blooming piece of paper, shall we? Open bag B. Right, good. So in bag B, I've got some, I've got some LEDs, got some switches, some nuts, patch sockets, and of course the power connector. So the power connector goes on the wrong side of the board. Like that. And that's before we start putting on all the other bits. So this is going to be the back of the board, so that's going to be the front. Ooh, what did I do to that? That's weird. Okay, it's all starting to fall apart now. Right, so I need to put this bit in. I'm going to have trouble with that. Maybe, I know I've got some blue tack over there, maybe that would be a good way of getting this one in. I could just jam in some blue tack like that. Oh, yeah, there might be a way. Put that on that a little bit. Yeah, good. Let's give that a go. soldering on the other side I just need to be really careful that I don't touch any other components with my soldering iron and melt them all right so that is not in the least bit straight <laughs> look at that look at that so yeah blue tack that really worked for me there so what I'm going to do because I've only done one pin I'm just going to melt it and see if I can correct this a little bit there we go there we go. That's better. Just more care and attention is all that's required. Right, lovely. That's a bit better. Okay, what's next? Out. Front panel components mounting tips. Now we're going to stick on all the bits. The uh, part, part of assembly is critical. Take your time. Read the instructions carefully. Must not be soldered until they're placed on the PCB and fully attached to the front panel. Right. Good. Because it helps with the whole alignment business. So we are not soldering. 
we are just putting them in place. So place all the mini jacks and don't solder. Make sure they're on the silk screen side. So this is the back. This is going to be the front here. This way around, I think. Like that. So actually all the components are on this side of the board, which isn't always that common. So with these, they've got three legs, a springy one at the front, and they've got these bits here that they go into, and they've got those two bits together which are for these. And if you put that front one in first, that slightly springy one, it seems to just go in nicely and hold everything in place. normally so why is that not going in then the hole is just a little bit smaller reasons I cannot explain it's in now squeeze one in there is that the lot that's a lot one two three four five switches remove the nuts just depends on how tall everything gets. Sometimes that nut is for going between the front panel. Just depends on the height of everything. Does it matter which way around they are? These have orientation. Make sure the momentary action is facing down. All right, that doesn't appear to be momentary action on these switches oh rats anyway if I look just put them all in in the same orientation that way around we will go with it so like that so I put them in the same whoop. so that way around right that they're all a bit wobbly Okay, but it's going to be okay so I can put the front panel on. That's going to hold everything. Right, potentiometers. This is in the other bag. These big fellas. The six are all the same. Put them on and then place a nut on each, but don't solder. So they go into these spaces here. They can only go one way around. They just kind of snap in those tabs go in nicely and hold it put them on and then place a nut on each but don't solder them okay right okay right good still with me right leds so place the leds minding their polarity don't solder them right long leg positive yeah we know that long leg positive so these are three of them on the board. These big circular things. Hmm. So that's awesome. Because on the board it doesn't tell me what's positive. So the long leg is positive, short is negative. On the PCB, the square pad indicates the negative side. The square pad is negative. It also has a slightly flattened side, which also you tend to find on the LED. Not always though. Doesn't seem to be one on this. But the long leg is positive which means that the short leg goes into the square. Short leg into the square. Short leg into the square. Great! Front panel! Okay, attach the front panel, adjusting parts one by one until they fit. Tweezers can be useful. Right. So I've got all these wobbly stuff. I need to put this over the top. <laughs> Everything's in the right place. Alright. Now. Now that okay is a good height for the switches so they don't need that nut on underneath that looks pretty good to me that's a good fit right so what we're going to do is put on a couple of nuts 
Tornado. They seem to be the most wobbly. Now I don't know about the black red, black red stuff as far as these banana nuts go. So I don't know what inputs and outputs are at present, but it doesn't matter. I'll just stick these on so it looks pretty. Oh, I haven't put the chip on. I haven't put the chip in. <laughs> so I am going to have to take the front panel off. God darn it. All right, so that's enough on there at the moment. I will solder everything except for the LEDs. I'll do the LEDs separately. Yeah. Because they just require a little bit more thought and adjustment. So, let's get across this thing. Okay, good. So those are all on, other than the LEDs at the moment. I think, I think I'm going to take this off, put in the chip before I put the LEDs in. So I don't want to have to take it off again once the LEDs are seated and set. So, all right. And so a tip: if you're <laughs> you're doing this kit, put the chip in. I always forget. Oh dear. I always um, tend to put the chips in last. That's because I don't want to accidentally put the soldering iron on one, you know, inadvertently blow it up. Because that's just kind of the kind of what I'm like. I know, I know my potential for disaster. But then, of course, in a situation like this, it means it gets left off. So here's my chip. It's got a dot on it that tells me what pin one is and that nick in the top and that follows on from the nick on the holder. Now I've got a tool here somewhere which helps me just squeeze the legs. It's called a leg squeezing tool or an IC I don't know, <laughs> leg tool and that means that that should go in nicely without having to squeeze anything if you can find a room it's the right way around that should just go in like so a bit of silicon stuffed in there great now put this back on So I don't know which which should be black and which should be red. That's a thing. Do I know if these are outputs or inputs? Okay, I found a picture of it now. It should be two reds in the middle, blacks around the outside. And you can use the magic tool to faff around. Put that on nice and tight. I'm sure little socket sets probably exist to do these screws on but I find that finger tight is usually enough okay all the nuts are on now I can do these LEDs just need to sight them in their holes now do I want them sticking out or do I want them flush I think I'm probably going to want them flush so to do that my best bet is a little bit of tape so this is not particularly sticky, this tape I'm finding, but if I stick that there, on there, and here, then I can put these up into the holes, and they should... <laughs> 
Go on, stick your little git. They should go through and stick without poking through. Is the plan. That's the idea. If you can get some half decent sticky tape. Right, solder. Good. Oh, look at that one. Completely blew it. Oh dear, so am I going to be able to do anything with that? This is the question. Oh, I thought those two came off and I thought, oh good, look at those, they're just fantastic. This one completely blew it. Right, so I could possibly heat both legs and give it a bit of a wobble. It's assuming I'm not going to burn my fingers off. <laughs> I'll use a little bit of blue tack on the end. Let's see whether I can pull this off by laying the soldier iron across both. All right, it's gone in, but now it feels like it's gone too far. Let's have a look. No, that's good. That's perfect. Right. Got away with that. Got away with that. Let's just solder it a little bit more. Make sure that solder's in there. Good job. Good recovery. Good. So we are almost there. Front panel, did all that. Next, just the LEDs yet. Put the knobs on. Knobs on. Put the knobs on. These all look the same to me. So I'm going to put all of these round to the left. These look like just squeeze on ones. So I'm going to line it up to the left most something or other and <laughs> push it on oh heck right, let's try another one does it have a does it have a, a, oop, a screw on it or anything no okay let's try this one over here all the way around to the left <laughs> okay this one they are not going on I mean they kind of are but not easily or not well now I should stress that these are prototype kits that uh, Bafaco sent out to me and I think it's important I get back to them with a couple of couple of notes couple of notes okay Cool. Well, that's all done. That looks done to me. What I should probably do is plug it in and see whether it smokes or does something. That would be interesting. I mean, what I'm not planning to do is any sort of big demo at this point because I'm only just introducing myself to the module. So what we'll do, we'll plug it in. We'll see if it can kick out some rhythms and, uh, and have a little bit of a play. Yeah, here we are then ready to be plugged in. Let's see if I can make it make some patterns yes this row's not turned on plug it into one of my power sockets let's put it in with a couple of screws just to secure it as i might be plugging thin things in and out okay let's turn it on okay lights no lights lights would be good now I think it's probably going to require a clock. So let's bring in a clock from somewhere. This one I think is a clock. Let's plug that in. Look at that. We have lights. It's alive. We have flashing lights. This one here. And that's doing a bit of a pattern. That one looks very steady, but then so does that one. What happens if. Oh, now that's changed. So that looks like it's the clock from here. 
and these two look like the patterns alpha and beta output one output and the other output that's going to have to be my assumption so let's go with output a plug it into my trigger one on the drum let's take output number two put it into trigger two not messing about you know take the output plug that in that nice There we go. Let's see if I can add something else for a bit of context. Maybe some, maybe some rooster. That might be nice. Some cockerel. Thank you. We've got an off at the top, in the middle they're doing their own thing and down they seem to be doing the same thing. Well, suffice to say that it works, it works. Not a problem, it's all doing its Euclidean thing. Now, I don't fully understand all of this as yet because I haven't spent any time with it because it's literally just been built. So I'm going to spend a bit more time with it, learn what it does, and then I'm going to combine it with the Clasmata, which I've also built, and do like a video on Euclidean rhythms using all of these modules. I think that might be interesting. There's also a trigger module and another strange trigger based sort of module thing that Bafaco have done with Rebel Tech. So I'm going to build the rest of those, put them all together into a video where we can really dig down. Oh, for heaven's sake, where we can dig down into what they are all about. Excellent. Job done. So there you are, the Stalkia, all working, all done. Not a difficult build, twice as many channels as the, the Clasmata. And perhaps has more possibilities, although this also seems to have sort of some CV inputs, which is interesting. So two different but similarly spec modules that I'm gonna be doing another video on soon. But as for the build of this, yeah, I mean, it's pretty good, it's pretty straightforward. There were no real, you know, dangers or mess ups it's just uh, a simple build decent enough thing i kind of wish it had a metal front panel but you know it's not the end of the world and those knobs those knobs are a pain but there you go all i could do is present the situation that i was given so i hope that's been useful i hope that build was useful and i hope to be able to do a fascinating video on euclidean rhythms very very soon so do stay tuned and in the meantime go make some tunes